Hello everybody and welcome into episode number 261 of the Bible 2021 podcast. We are in 2 Timothy chapter 1 today and our focus is on how do we fan into flames the gift of God in our life. So every day we spend about well, 10, 12, 13 or so minutes digging into God's Word chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Our goal is to get all of us involved in daily Bible listening, understanding, following, and obeying. Tell somebody about the show today. Invite them to join with you on a daily journey into God's Word chapter by chapter. Our website is Bible2021.com. Every episode there has a transcript with show notes and You can also contact us there with a question or comment. Well, we're in Paul's second letter to Timothy today. As a reminder, who was Timothy? Well, he co-authored at least six books in the Bible. He was in full-time ministry, a pastor, a church planter, a missionary, part of Paul's traveling apostolic team, a mighty man of God who was incredibly fruitful and used by God in the first century, and yet... Paul says something very, very surprising to Timothy in this letter. In the very opening, verse 6, he says, Therefore I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound judgment. Well, look, if Timothy, who you know had been in full-time ministry, whatever that looks like in first century for a long time, if Timothy, who had written six books of the Bible, or co-written, if Timothy, who directly worked with Paul and Luke and Barnabas and other mighty men of God in the first century, if Timothy needs a reminder to fan into flames God's gift or rekindle it, then I guarantee you that you and I need such a reminder too. I also note here that this is the second time that Paul writes this almost same exact command to Timothy. We see it in the first letter to Timothy 2, chapter 4, verse 14. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, It was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. So Paul tells Timothy, fan your gift in the flames. Don't neglect it. Don't forget it. What does it mean to fan your gift into flames? How can we do this in ourselves? Well, to help us answer that, let's do a quick word study. The Greek word that Paul uses here, that some translations are, say, fan into flames, and the CSB says rekindle, is the Greek word anazoporeo, anazoporeo. It means to kindle up or inflame or strengthen or inflame. There's actually three words here smashed into one. The first word is ana, which means in the middle. Zoe is a living being, something with life. And then pereo, which means fire. So quite literally, what Paul is saying to Timothy is put fire in the middle of you to fan into flames God's gift. Uh, This was the 80s, and Paul and Timothy were WWF wrestling fans, which is a ridiculous sentence, I know. Maybe Paul would have written to Timothy, Hulk up the gift of God which is in you. Well, how do we fan our gifts into flame? How do you fan your gifts into flame? Well, Paul doesn't tell us exactly, but I would like to offer a four-step biblical process that will help you and I both fan God's gifts to us that are already in us into white-hot flames. Well, step one is obviously to abide or to remain in Jesus, to earnestly seek Him daily with His Word being in us. We read in John 15, verse 4, Jesus says, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Well, we see an example of how this works out in Acts 4.31. When the church was threatened to stop preaching in the name of Jesus, verse 31 says that when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So you see there, there's a great connection between abiding in Jesus, praying, seeking his face, his words abiding in you, and in boldness to bear witness for God. Well, that's the first step is to abide. When we abide in Jesus, we will bear fruit. And I believe that's the process of 
stirring up that gift of God in us. Well, the second way to stir up that gift or to set it aflame is to get untangled. Hebrews 12 verse 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Well, look, what we see there is sin kills endurance. I think it's the number one cause of burnout in the church or in ministry. Uh, It's not working too hard. It's not criticism or difficulty. I mean, those are significant and real, too. It's not just the nature of ministry uh, that causes people to burn out. It's sin. I think that's the number one thing that robs you and I of our endurance. Sin entangles. Sin puts out the fire that is in us. So as Hebrews says, don't be entangled. Look to Jesus and be delivered from our sin. Well, third step, we should discover our gift. I find that most people in the church, in the body of Christ, even people that have been there for years, don't know exactly what spiritual gift they have. Well, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly how to know what our spiritual gift that's in us is, but we can discover it because the Holy Spirit will lead us to that. And we do that via prayer and seeking God and in the middle of God's people and community and reading through the word of God and experimenting and adventuring in the gift that we have. Uh, We can read 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14. We can read Ephesians 4 and 5. We can read Romans 12 and ask the Lord, pray, do, seek, knock, listen, Talk to other people. Say, hey, what, what do you think my spiritual gift is? Let's, we don't have to be private about that. You're not an island. Um, talk to people. Say, you know, what do you see God doing in me? If you know the gift of God you have in you, then it's much easier to see it fanned into flames as we seek the Lord and pray and become entangled from our sin. Well, the final thing that we can do is to boldly use your gift. When you know what your gift is, when you're not entangled by sin, when you're abiding in Jesus, you can be bold about whatever gift God has given you. Maybe it's teaching. Maybe it's showing mercy. Maybe it's praying for people. Maybe it's the gift of healing. You pray for people and God uses you for somebody to get well. Maybe it's um encouragement. Maybe it's serving. Well, you can use your gift boldly, and that's how it's going to be fanned into flame. 1 Peter 4.10, Peter writes, Based on the gift each one has received, use it to serve others as good managers of the varied grace of God. If anyone speaks, it should be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, it should be from the strength God provides, so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So it is God who provides you the strength to serve other people with the gift that he's given you. And when that happens, and we actually do, we use our gift, then the glory goes to God through Jesus. And I think that energizes that gift in us more and more exactly in the way that it's fanned into flames. Well, here's some quick thoughts from Pastor Sam Storms on this passage. He says, this verse in 2 Timothy is important. It tells us that one, that one may receive a spiritual gift only to neglect and ignore it. The imagery Paul uses is helpful. He describes a spiritual gift in terms of a flame that, flame that needs to be continually fanned. If it is not understood and nurtured and utilized in the way God intended, the once brightly burning flame can be reduced to a smoldering ember. Take whatever steps you must. Study, pray, seek the face of God. Put your gift into practice, but by all means, stoke the fire until that gift returns to its intended intensity. Amen. Well, let's read our passage. 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by God's will, for the sake of the promise of life in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly loved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience as my ancestors did when I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. 
Remembering your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I recall your sincere faith that first lived in your grandmother grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now I am convinced is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. So don't be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Instead, share in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. This has now been made evident through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald, an apostle, and teacher, and that is why I suffer these things, but I am not ashamed, because I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. Hold on to the pattern of sound teaching that you have heard from me, the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. You know that all of those in the province of Asia have deserted me, including Phygeles and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he diligently searched for me and found me. May the Lord grant that he obtain mercy from him on that day, you know very well how much he ministered at Ephesus. Amen. Well, we close out with another passage from 2 Timothy. It's 2 Timothy three sixteen through 17, which is our Bible memory verses for the month of September. And it says, All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Good day to you, friends, and Godspeed.